last lecture we were looking at the hydrogen molecule, the quantum chemistry of hydrogen molecule and we began the discussion with the two methods or the two approaches which are commonly employed for studying the hydrogen molecule namely the valence bond method and the molecular orbital method. And after introducing the molecular orbital method a bit, I switched over to the original uh, proposition of hydrogen molecule, the solutions for the Schrodinger equation, which was proposed by Heitler and London. And we just started writing down the equation for the energy when we ran out of time. So uh, let me uh, recall the last equation that we wrote down in today's lecture. This is uh, on hydrogen molecule continued. Let me go back and recollect the expression for the energy using the valence bond wave function. The valence bond wave function is uh, for the two nuclei called A and B denoted A and B. Let me just use that. Yeah. And the electrons denoted 1 and 2 with the electron coordinates R1 and R2. The valence bond wave function was what you see here 1 by 2 square root of 2 into 1 plus S square times this wave function psi 1 s A R 1 psi 1 s B R 2 plus the electrons uh, being indistinguishable their coordinates switched with psi 1 s A R 2 psi 1 s B R 1 and the energy expression for this wave function was given by the integral psi star psi here the psi is again and with the Hamiltonian in between the Hamiltonian is that which I wrote uh, as we would uh, calculate because the way it is reorganized gives us uh, some simple things immediately. This is the Hamiltonian and then we have the psi uh, star psi that is psi star h psi and the normalization constant is already there in the form of uh, 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square. So, so this is the integral that we wanted to calculate and at this point I stopped. So now let us start looking at this integral term by term. The way I have grouped it you can see that there are two wave functions here products of two wave functions but two terms here uh, which I call as maybe term 1 and term 2. And the Hamiltonian I have blocked this in the form of three groups, the group for the Hamiltonian for electron uh, in the atom 1, the Hamiltonian for the electron in the atom 2 plus the potential energy terms uh, involving the electron 1 being attracted by the nucleus uh, 2, electron 2 with the nucleus 1 and the electron electron repulsion the nuclear nuclear repulsion all these things being grouped into a separate uh, block. So what you have is 1, 2 there are 3 Hamiltonian blocks and 1, 2 you can call this also 1 and 2. So you have the integrals of various kinds today if we have to write it and let us also call this as maybe uh, H1, H2 and h3, 3 blocks. So a total of how many terms we have? We have the integral term 1, h1, term 1. We have term 1, uh, h2, uh, term 1 and the last in that will be term 1 h 3 term 1. 
So, this involves the first term on both sides and likewise you have 1 on the left, 2 on the right, 2 on the left, 1 on the right and 2 on the left and 2 on the right. So, into 4 a total of 12 terms are there. Okay. But we do not need to evaluate all the 12 terms because uh, we see that by symmetry some of these terms are equal to the others. So, let us look at the first one. What I call as term 1 is this integral 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square integral psi 1 as a or 1 psi 1 as b or 2 multiplied by or with the Hamiltonian operator minus h square by h bar square by 2 m e del e 1 square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a 1 acting on the wave function psi 1 as a or 1 psi 1 as b or 2 d or 1 d or 2 both are three dimensional integrals over the electron coordinates r 1 and r 2 which is nothing but the first term in this block here, the first part of the Hamiltonian h 1 and the first term here. Okay. It is very easy because you see this, this is the Hamiltonian for the electron in atom uh, 1, hydrogen atom 1 acting on the wave function for the electron in the hydrogen atom 1 psi 1 as a r 1 corresponds to the uh, electron associated with the atom A and therefore, this is nothing but the h psi is equal to E psi for the hydrogen atom and since we involve the 1 s orbital of atom A, we have E 1 s A. So, this will give you E 1 s atom A psi 1 s A or 1 okay, which is this term the Hamiltonian acting on the wave function gives you this e 1 as a. Okay. And the rest you know that it is going to be normalization because what is left over is the moment the Hamiltonian operation is taken as a constant uh, uh, with the eigenvalue, what is left over is the wave function psi 1 as a r 1 psi 1 as a r 1 d r 1 and then the wave function which is not changed which is psi 1 as b r 2 uh, psi 1 as b r 2 d r 2 and therefore, that is 1. So, the answer here is simply e 1 as a. gives the integral gives. So, term 1 is 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square times e 1 as a sorry it is not uh, a we have just a superscript a as we write here. What about uh, the next one? The next term that I would like to do uh, look at is term uh, let us call it term uh, 2 for energy involves the same wave function 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square integral psi 1 as a or 1 psi 1 as b or 2 with the Hamiltonian acting on the left the Hamiltonian being minus h bar square by 2 m e del e 2 square the second electron minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or b 2 as we have written acting on the wave function psi 1 as a or 1 psi 1 as b or 2 d or 1 d or 2. Okay. Again this is uh, exactly the same as the previous term except for this being on the electron 2. Okay. That is uh, this is the Hamiltonian for the electron associated with atom 2 and acting on the wave function uh, associated with the electron in atom 2 psi 1 as b and the answer for this is going to give you E 1 s and a b or a does not matter 
because B or A essentially tells you uh, that uh, which atom, I mean both hydrogen atoms are equal. So, E 1 is B and E 1 is A are the same, but acting or multiplied by psi 1 is B or 2. And the rest you also know that it is going to be normalization, because once the Hamiltonian's uh, action on the wave function is given by the energy, the wave function is normalized. So, this will also give you exactly the same result that we had, which is 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square E 1 s b. Now, the third term in the first block that we wrote, the third term for the energy is whatever is remaining namely 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square integral psi 1 s a or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 with the Hamiltonian the remaining term which is minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught times 1 by or a 2 plus 1 by or b 1 minus 1 by or 1 2 minus 1 by or a b. Okay. All of this multiplied by the wave function psi 1 s a or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 or 2 times d or 1 d or 2. Okay. Now, you can clearly see that the terms can be easily blocked out as 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square. Let us put a bigger bracket. You can take the terms to be psi 1 s a or 1, psi 1 s a or 1 and uh, minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught uh, 1 by r b 1 this is the same thing as the Coulomb integral that we calculated for the hydrogen molecule ion. All of this correspond to the electron 1, but associated also with the atom 2, the nucleus 2 or B. And therefore, this is the Coulombic energy for the electron at the atom B due to the electron density of uh, the uh, uh, electron being associated with uh, atom 1 at the position R 1. So, this is the charge density, it is a divided by the distance, so it is a Coulomb integral. By the same token, let me remove that, remove that, okay. or let us let us have it that way. Let us uh, this is already marked or B1 and psi 1 is A R1. Now let us mark the same thing with uh, the next item. If you look at psi 1 as B or 2 e square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a 2 psi 1 s b or 2 d or 2. If you do that, that is exactly the same j integral except that everything is now shifted to the electron 2. So, these two terms contribute identically. And then the remaining two terms, the, the, the remaining product of course, you can see that psi 1 s a or 1 in this case, psi 1 s a or 1 d or 1 will be 1. And therefore, you have this whole thing is the electron 1 some density divided by a distance associated with electron 1 coordinate, electron 2 density psi star psi divided by the distance associated with electron 2 nucleus 2 or nucleus 1 that does not matter. It is a charge density by distance and then you also have psi 1 as a r 1 psi 1 as a r 1 that is electron 1 density square density, electron 2 density psi 1 as b r 2 psi 1 as b r 2, two electron densities divided by 1 by r 1 2, which is obviously the Coulombic uh, repulsion between the two charge densities electron 1 and electron 2 separated by a distance r 1 2 and summed over. Of course, that integral tells you that you are summing over all such things. Therefore, this whole thing is Coulomb and the last term r a b we do not need to worry about it, because it does not have electron coordinates. Therefore, it will merely give you the answer minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by r a b does not change anything. 
therefore it is it is an addition to the total energy. So, this whole integral which when it is blocked out into three forms appears like psi 1 s a r 1 squared divided by with a minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or b 1 d r 1 and multiplied by of course, psi 1 s b r 2 squared d r 2. Okay. This is of course, 1. So, this is the first term in the j integral and the next term will be exactly the same, but for the electron 2 4 pi epsilon naught. So, what you have is psi 1 s b r 2 squared divided by r a 2 d r 1 d r 2 multiplied by the integral psi 1 s a r 1 square d r 1 okay. and the last of course, uh, the two terms is uh, minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught integral psi 1 s a uh, 1 s a r 1 square psi 1 s b or 2 squared divided by or 1 2 plus of course, sorry plus d or 1 d or 2 all inside this uh, big bracket the curly bracket and the last term which is plus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught into 1 by or a b, because whatever is left over is integrated to 1 due to normalization. So, this is the whole thing is called the j or Coulombic integral. The calculation of these two terms, the Coulombic integrals involving electron 1 at a distance uh, from the second nucleus and electron 2 at a distance from the second new the first nucleus. These two are exactly the same as the H 2 plus molecular ion Coulomb integral calculation. Therefore, there is nothing new, but what is new here is this additional term the electron electron repulsion, which is uh, something now we have to carefully evaluate. You see that it is uh, centered on two different nuclei A and B and also it is a two electron repulsion integral. So, it is a two center two electron repulsion integral. This requires a bit of time and I will not do that. We will simply call it by the Coulombic integral. In an assignment, I will probably show you how to calculate this. It is somewhat tedious to evaluate. Okay. And the other thing is of course, the nuclear, nuclear repulsion energy which simply adds to the total energy and as the nuclei are farther apart, this energy becomes smaller and so on. So, you see that the calculation of the first term, if we go back, the first term namely 1 h 1 1, 1 h 1 1, h 2 1 and 1 h 3 1, where 1 is this wave function 1 s a r 1 1 s b r 2 gives you in summary e so far. So far, it gives you 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square e 1 s a plus e 1 s b both are identical plus j. Okay. There are 9 more terms that we need to evaluate namely psi 1 s a or 2, let us take the second group of terms psi 1 s b r 1 and of course, it is multiplied by 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square here with the Hamiltonian as h 1 plus h 2 plus h 3 acting on psi 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 1 d or 1 d or 2. Okay. 
this is the second group of the three terms that you have to evaluate. And uh, it should be obvious to you, if not, uh, after my pointing it out, that this term cannot have any value different from what we just discussed, because you have the wave functions with the coordinates R1 and R2 interchanged. But it is integrated over all the coordinates of R1, all the dr1 and all the dr2, and the Hamiltonian is of course symmetric to the interchange of these two coordinates because it is about the two indistinguishable electrons, uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, and the nuclear uh, potential energy. Therefore, the Hamiltonian is symmetric with respect to the interchange of 1 and 2. The wave functions are only interchanging the coordinates, and dr1 and dr2 are sort of dummy variables when you do the integration. Therefore, this is exactly the same as what we had calculated namely 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square. It is also E 1 s a plus E 1 s b plus j, no difference. What you call as R 2, what I call as R 1 does not matter, but consistently if you call something as R 2 and the other is R 1, you must consistently do the algebra and you see that the choice is uh, gives you that these two terms to be identical. Therefore, uh, six terms by looking at the symmetry of this calculation, we can immediately say that these six terms give you the simple result. What about the other six terms? Now, let us look at the first set namely uh, 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square integral psi 1 s a or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 with the three Hamiltonian terms h 1 plus h 2 plus h 3. Now, acting on the other wave function namely 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 1 d or 1 d or 2. Okay. Now, h 1 is associated with electron 1. Please remember it is minus h bar square by 2 m e del e 1 square minus e square by 4 pi epsilon naught or a 1 is del 1 square. That is the electron 1. Electron 1 Hamiltonian acting on the electron 1 wave function on the left. Hamiltonian is a Hermitian operator. Therefore, it acts on the function on the left side or on the right side giving you at the most complex conjugate values, but being a Hermitian operator it gives you real eigenvalues. And therefore, h 1 acting on psi 1 s a on the left hand side is going to give you psi 1 s a times e 1 s a. This will give you e 1 s a again, except, except what is left over is after this h 1 acts on what is left over is E 1 s a times psi 1 s a r 1 psi 1 s b r 1 d r 1. If you look at this integral psi 1 s a r 1 sorry psi 1 s a r 1 psi 1 s b r 1 d r 1. This Hamiltonian has given already the E 1 s a and the remaining is of course, the integral psi 1 s uh, uh, a or 2 psi 1 s sorry psi 1 s b or 2 yes psi 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 2 d or 2. Okay. Now, this is the overlap integral for the two wave functions associated with the two nuclei with the electron 1. Therefore, this is S A B and this is the overlap integral for the electron 2 associated with the two nuclei A B and this is also S A B. Therefore, the answer that you would get for the first term is E 1 S A times 1 plus S square A B. That is only the H 1, the first term. I do not need to tell you now H 2 will give you exactly the same answer because it is all with reference to the electron 2 Hamiltonian and the electron 2 Hamiltonian acting on the wave function for the psi 1 s b is going to give you again E 1 s b. So, the answer here will be plus 
E 1 S B times 1 plus S square A B. And the last term that we are left with namely term 3, let us write that out is 1 by 2 into 1 plus S square integral psi 1 S A, I think I had R 1, yes, R 1 psi 1 S B R 2 with minus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught 1 by R, uh, what did we do? A 2 plus 1 by R B 1 minus 1 by R 1 2 minus 1 by R A B. Uh, all of this acting on psi 1 s A R 2 psi 1 s B R 1 D R 1 D R 2. If you look at this and separate this into coordinates of the electrons, what you get is exact, exactly similar things to what you had as the k integral in the H 2 plus ion that is the exchange integral. Let us write that out. It is psi 1 s A R 1 and uh, the coordinate R 1 is of course, minus E square by 4 pi epsilon naught or B 1 psi 1 s b r 1 d r 1. This is one type and the remaining term which is psi 1 s a r 2 psi 1 s a r 1 psi 1 s b r 2 d r 2. This is the first of the four terms that you have for the B 1 and likewise you can write for the A 2 involving psi 1 s B R 2 and psi 1 s B R psi 1 s A R 2. Therefore, this whole thing is now called the exchange integral K. of course, multiplied by 1 by 2 into 1 plus S A B square. Okay. So, term 2 or the, the group of terms which involve the wave functions, uh, the two different wave functions psi 1 s A or 1 psi 1 s B or 2 and the wave function psi 1 s A or 2 and psi 1 s B or 1 with the Hamiltonian in between give you the uh, energy E 1 s A, the energy E 1 s B both multiplied by 1 plus S square and of course, the rest of it being simply called as the uh, exchange integral K. So, the answer for the second group of terms is the energy now again partly is if you go back uh, to the expression here, we had uh, E 1 s A, this is uh, into 2. So, we should write 1 by 1 plus S square E 1 s A plus E 1 s B plus J that is for the first two terms and first two or six terms together and now what we have is 1 by 2 into 1 plus s square E 1 s A s square sorry plus E 1 s B s square plus k. Okay. And the last group of three terms is only going to have these two wave functions interchanged. Let us go back to the integral. Yeah, in this integral. In this integral, this wave function and this wave function will be left right interchanged and with the Hamiltonian of course. So, it is not going to give you any different result, it is going to give you exactly the same result as 
uh, we had uh, just now calculated and therefore, the answer is again into 2 for this part and so this 2 goes away. Okay. So, what is left over is then the total energy now is E psi V B plus is therefore, 1 by 1 plus S square times E 1 S A into 1 plus S square plus E 1 S B into 1 plus S square plus J plus K. And of course, you can cancel this out with that. And so, what is uh, the total energy, uh, what the total energy is, it is E 1 S twice because A and B refer to basically 1s electron uh, hydrogen energy. So, twice E 1 s plus J plus K divided by 1 plus s square. This is the uh, energy associated with the state one by 2 into 1 plus s square square root psi 1 s a or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 plus psi 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 1. Okay. So, we have the Coulomb integral and the uh, exchange integral that we have here and we have the overlap integral square and the energy of the valence associated with the valence bond wave function, the average energy associated with the valence bond wave function is uh, in addition the difference between that and the sum of the two hydrogen energies if the hydrogen atoms did not interact with each other. If you call that as delta E plus, then we can write this uh, sorry we can write this as delta E psi m o plus if we have to do that, that is E average minus psi m o plus the 2 E 1 s and that is given by j plus k by 1 plus s square. Okay. Both j and k are negative s is positive and therefore, you see that the delta E plus is now negative, which means that as the hydrogen atoms come together as a function as a function of 1 of the R A B the internuclear distance, you see that there is attraction and until the R A B becomes sufficiently small for this whole thing to become uh, positive, the energy is uh, decreasing and therefore, there is an optimal distance of R A B at which the energy is minimum and this is what is called the bonding energy or energy of the bonding orbital of the balance bond orbital. Okay. The calculation of J and the calculation of K uh, in the case of hydrogen molecule involves involves a one additional step namely the electron electron repulsion term electron electron repulsion term in addition to the, the terms that we calculated earlier for the hydrogen molecule ion, but they can be done and I am not going to discuss the magnitude of that. They are all uh, fairly straightforward integrals and when you do that the final uh, result E or delta E plus delta E for this uh, psi m o plus as a function of or a b internuclear distance. Can be plotted and I am going to give you the results that others have done calculated earlier. So, if you plot the delta E psi 
psi m o plus as a function of the internuclear distance r a b. What you see is you calculate the graph looks like that and this is 0, 0. That is this is where the absolute energy scale it is the sum of the two hydrogen 1s energies namely minus 27.2 electron volts. You remember that the 1s electron of the hydrogen atom uh, is stable by minus 13.6 electron volts and when you have two such hydrogen atoms non interacting sitting next to each other the total energy of the system is minus 27.2 electron volts and that is the baseline with respect to which the energy of the valence bond orbital is less and therefore this distance where this is the minimum the energy is the delta E is the maximum this distance this is the equilibrium bond distance. We use the valence bond orbital with the plus between the two wave functions namely R1 and R2, psi 1 is A R2, psi 1 is B R1. Now, if we use a minus combination, the normalization constant can be shown without much algebra that it is 1 plus or minus s square. Okay. That would be the wave function and if you calculate the energies delta E plus it will turn out to be delta E for the minus combination psi m o minus it will be j minus k divided by 1 minus s square. So, if we plot this value delta E minus that is for the psi m o minus in the same graph. Uh, let us use a different color. Okay. So, if I plot delta E minus psi m o minus, then the graph shows no minimum, which means that when the energy is calculated for the anti-symmetric combination, please note that this is an anti-symmetric combination with the minus sign if you write this 1 by square root of 2 into 1 minus s square psi 1 s a or 1 psi 1 s b or 2 minus psi 1 s a or 2 psi 1 s b or 1. This wave function is anti symmetric with respect to the interchange of the coordinates of 1 and 2, because when you interchange r 1 and r 2 the wave function becomes a negative of itself. Therefore, this is an anti symmetric combination and this anti symmetric combination gives rise to no stability. You can see that that the energy is always above the, uh, the mi what is called the minimum in the scale which is the sum of the two hydrogen atoms. Therefore, in that state the electrons if they are placed the electronic energy is greater than the sum of the two hydrogen atoms and therefore, this is what is obviously not even non bonding it is anti to the bonding and so this combination is known as the anti bonding valence orbital, anti bonding orbital. But it is interesting now to go back and look at what I said regarding these two wave functions in the last lecture that the overall wave function for the two electrons which involves not only the spatial coordinates R 1 and R 2, but involve also the spin coordinates namely the alphas and betas uh, the wave functions of the, uh, the two electrons. You see that the anti symmetric combination uh, in the coordinate space obviously requires the spin wave functions to be. Uh, symmetric. So, uh, there are three spin wave functions namely alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 1 beta 2 plus beta 1 alpha 2 and beta 1 beta 2. There are three of them 
and in the absence of any external magnetic field or in the absence of uh, the perceived absence of the electron uh, orbital spin angular momentum interactions, okay, we assume that it is not there. In that, uh, in the absence of those, these three states are obviously degenerate, the spin states are degenerate. Therefore, the anti-symmetry combination has three possible states, degenerate states, whereas the symmetric combination which we took with the plus sign has only one possible spin state which is anti-symmetric and that is called the ground state. So, the ground state of the hydrogen molecule with the two electrons in the same uh, molecular or the bonding orbital, the valence bond orbital if you think of that. The ground state is such that it is a spin 0 state, both the spins are paired and therefore, uh, in, the abs in, the, in a magnetic field the spin quantum number will be 0 for that. And uh, the uh, anti-symmetric state has the spin quantum number uh, is corresponding to the triplet state, the total spin will be 1 and there are three possible states for a spin 1 namely 1, 0, minus 1 and those 1, 0, minus 1 states are the states given by alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 1, beta 2, minus plus beta 1, alpha 2 and the last one beta 1, beta 2. So, you see that this uh, kind of approach when it is meshed with the spin angular momentum states gives you a reasonable picture which does not violate any fundamental principle, particularly the Pauli's exclusion principle. And so, let me summarize this with the correlation energy diagram that we have. Namely, if we start with the two oneness states for nucleus A and nucleus B, the symmetric combination gives rise to an energy which is, uh, let me put it in such a way, uh, we should be able to draw that within this screen. So, the symmetric combination, this difference is in our calculation, it is j plus k by 1 plus s square and the other state is j minus k by 1 minus s square. And so, you have the two electrons in this state which is a spin 0 state for the spin and this is given by 1 by square root of alpha 1 beta 2 minus beta 1 alpha 2 times psi m o plus times. If on the other hand you have the two electrons excited, then what you have is the two 1s orbitals of the electron A 1s B and uh, the lower state and the upper state if we do that here and connect that these states uh, originate from these two 1s wave functions and that is the connection and these, this state also originates from this two 1s and that is the connection. So, if you put the two electrons here, then you see that the electron has to have uh, three possible states, it is a triplet state. Okay. And you have to see that, you have to put in the, it is a three fold degenerate in terms of, uh, uh, in the absence of any spin interactions and the electrons can be uh, with the uh, plus plus or plus minus and minus plus and minus minus. So, this is a triplet state, the excited anti-bonding state and the bonding state is a singlet state. There is a whole uh, set of data available and I would like to refer you for example, for some preliminary data to the book by Macquarie uh, and uh, I think there is a table in chapter 9. I would not write those things, please refer to the textbook for variation in uh, different approaches, variation between approaches. along with uh, the references to the original papers is given by uh, Professor Macquarie, quantum chemistry 
I am sure you can find them elsewhere as well, but it is a ready reference for you in case you need to know where things are and I think it is table 9.1. Table 9.1 okay. and results of various calculation. This table contains many, many data, various calculations of H2 or H2. There is a reference to the valence bond method, two different ways of doing it. There is also a reference to the molecular orbital method, two different ways of doing it. Then uh, you remember that in the molecular orbital approach, we uh, identified the valence bond contribution and then we had this H minus H plus and H plus H minus contribution, namely the electron 1 and the electron 2 both associated with the 1s orbital of the hydrogen atom A. The term corresponding to that was psi 1s A or 1 psi 1s A or 2. And then we had the H plus H minus, which has the electron, both the electrons associated with the atom B. So, if you do that, that is called the ionic contribution. And so, valence bond plus some ionic contribution with different weightings, different uh, uh, co combination coefficients, what are the results and so on. So, you see that this is a very rich field for the electronic structure theorist to uh, provide what are called the good guesses of the molecular orbital wave functions. Finally, with those energies which are very close to what we measure experimentally as frequencies, therefore these energies are such that the difference between these energies should give you the match between the experimental frequencies and the theoretically calculated values. And I believe uh, the valence bond plus ionic contribution and another method which I will discuss later known as the hartree fock method are very close to experimental results. So, there is, a, there is a whole list of things about the hydrogen molecule that you would like to refer to and some of these things would be put up in my lecture notes along with the PDF file. But the basic calculational aspects uh, I have uh, exemplified here with uh, some blocking of the terms and I hope that it is helpful to you in understanding how to do such molecular uh, bonding calculations. So, in the next lecture we move on to other homonuclear diatomic molecules and we would do more qualitatively the bonding and the anti-bonding orbital picture. We will draw that and we will draw what are known as the electronic correlation diagrams or correlation of energy diagrams. We will look at for both the homonuclear and heteronuclear diatomic molecules and later on we move on to what are known as simply the polyatomic molecular uh, chemical bonding picture. Okay. Until then, thank you very much.